Okay, hello. This is where we will start shading this uh, contour study of three glass forms. We're going to try to get it done in half an hour. If we don't, then you'll be. this will be one of the few that will probably have a third video that says detail, uh, you know, added detail. Okay, so we're going to go in and we're going to start, we'll start with the big one in, up here uh, in the image. I also want to let you know that there are, there is another video that's called, um, I think it, I titled it, uh, Glass Demonstration. It's by an artist by the name of Scott Hutchinson from the Artist League, and it was the best video I found for drawing glass. So watch him as well as mine. He is different than I am, but he is similar in some ways, and it's a very good video. And the more different artists you can uh, work with and get to know if you're art majors, uh, that's how you learn. Everyone is different. Every artist is different. Everyone else does things differently. So you'll learn um, through the variety of artists that you need. Okay. And that's why I have him. If I could find more videos by different artists, I would definitely will upload them so that you have a variety of how other people uh, draw so that you can, if you, especially if you find someone who is similar to you or you're fascinated and want to learn to draw the way they do. Okay. All right, so because this is glass, I don't ha I'm not going to go in with my black charcoal and just push it in because I need it to be light. All this is white glass. If you, had an, if you were smarter than I was, you find a nice brown bottle, go for it. But everything I had was very light, so I need to start light. So I don't have to try to pull off all the charcoal um, in the world. So what I'm doing is I like using my fingers uh, as, a, as a drawing tool. You can use scrubbies. Do I have any with me? I don't think so. I do have them, but I don't know where I left them. Ah, yes, I do. Sorry, I'm leaving this thing. Scrubbies are here, and scrubbies can be used to remove charcoal. <laughs> yeah, I fell out of my hair. It can be used to remove charcoal and it can be used to apply charcoal. So you can take it and you can apply it right to the scrubby itself and drag it, where am I? And drag it on like that and it does work. It also is a good tool for removing. You can um, clean scrubbies. Uh, by getting fine sandpaper and scrubbing it and, and removing it. And when they get really bad, you can cut them and then you can just replace them. They're not terribly expensive. But I like my hands. You can also use your paper towels. Okay, so we're going to quickly, I got to get pick up speed here. Let's get moving. Stop talking and start drawing. Let's go. All right. So we're going to just quickly... Um, try to suggest where the darks are, and then I'm going to go back. I'm just going to use a lot of eraser, and ultimately, I have my charcoal pencil right there. I had it in my hair, but it fell out. So, um, I'm going to, uh, abs any absolute little detail, and if I need it, the charcoal pencil is where you start bringing in these little details. Anytime you need them, it, it's a good tool for that. Now, with um, when you are shading uh, glass, and it's a clear glass or, or a whitish glass, what I tend to do is I put in all my, I get a mid-tone. I find the mid-tone in the, in the glass itself. I try to find the mid-tone, and I try to make the whole area that mid-tone. Okay? And then I get in with the darker elements like this darker element and how do I work that darker element in um, and then I start to control that and I like to try to do my entire uh, vase or glass bottle or glass cup in that manner and then I go back at the end with an eraser and if you have to the white charcoal and bring in your highlights um, because you need something to remove to get those bright whites. So it's, for me, easiest to lay all the, all the darks in first and then go back. So let me get moving. So I can at least show you on one of them how I get the 
lights in. I need, a, I need another set of hands. I'm reading a series of children's books. They're for children. They're called um, The Unwanted's, and they're written for young adults. They're about the same age as Harry Potter. And, um, and they're about, it's about a society that, um, if you are an artist, they basically send you to die in a, in a, in a boiling lake of hot lava. Um, they don't want artists. They only want the military and in science people. They don't want artists. It's called the unwanted. And in the story, people think that they're actually sending their children who are artists to die. But if they don't, the whole family will go and be be killed. So they send their their artistic children. They think off to die. When actually, once they're behind these giant gates, they become. Uh, they go into a world like Harry Potter of magic and art where making art, music, and making visual art and music and dance is power and they have power like Harry Potter, they have magic. And so they go into this hidden dimension and create art. And they have a teacher who is an actor gator. She's both an octopus and an alligator and she has eight arms so she can paint you know, six colors and do detail, and I need a couple more arms. So I always think of her. She's an interesting character. Okay. So we're putting that in. We need to tone this because it is our bottle. But we don't want a lot of tone in here. We just want a little tone. Okay. Um, and then this is where glass is a little we've got this background space right here so right here i have the line that is the glass bottle itself right here but i also have this black that ultimately becomes a shadow out here for the background comes in right here and it kind of weirdly works its way through the glass at a weird angle which is quite beautiful now we've got to capture it in our drawing okay all right so we're happier with that we got to step back but that's good we need to make sure i keep this i gotta make sure i keep this nice and clean up here because really if i do it right i have to put anything up there just keep a nice clean clean surface I need to sharpen up this, so gently drag that. I need to gently bring in this line, so I'm going to gently drag it so I have more charcoal on my fingers to smudge. Okay. There's some nice darks right here in this bottle because the light, my light source is here. So it's coming down this way. So the light's here, the light's here, and I have some nice darks right here. So let's get those in. Down here, it's a little crazy with lights and darks. So do the best you can. Choose the darkest ones and the ones that make most sense to you and bring them in. If it makes absolutely no sense to you, see if the drawing survives with the ones that you understand. If they don't, if it doesn't and it still doesn't look right, that's when you contact me. Send me an image and I'll help you. These are the weird angles that this cuts across the base of this. And at the same time, there's still the this bottom seems darker. So this whole area gets kind of dark right through here. 
of the vase. And then this comes down pretty sharply as a dark element. And you bring that down here. And then this becomes the edge that gets dark again. Right, just right there. And then we come in here like this. And this has to come in here so it's a little darker back there. It's got some interesting angled lights kind of like this coming in at it. So I'm going to bring those in. It's almost like fracturing of the light through, through this pattern on the bottom. And then it catches its own edge, drawn edge, there. And now the cast shadow is right here. And it kind of goes off. So let's bring that in. That's just going to be an... I'm going to hoping I can just keep that as a nice, smooth, unadulterated, simple shadow. That's not too bad. Now, what we want to do is in here, this is where some lights and darks are happening again. But we're going to get what we can. We've got some lights going this way, this way, this way, across here, across here, and that goes into shadow there. So we're going to try creating that. Okay. We're going to get back under here and sharpen up that bottom. And I'm going to step back to see if what I've done even makes any sense. Because I'm right on the edge of it. And I think it does, but I want to make sure. Okay, that's not bad. All right, now, um, this is where you can use your um, Mars eraser, something like this, the white one. I clean it on my clothes because it tends to get dirty. Now we're going to, before we go to these, we're going to go in and try to grab some detail of the whites on this, this, um, vase. We're going to go in and just remove these right here where I need bright, bright whites. Again, you always negotiate edges if they need edges negotiated. If they're bright whites like that, they may not need negotiation. They may just need to sit right on the top. So you make that determination while you're drawing. And always step back. Or if you're drawing down, stand up and look at your drawing. Okay. Here we have some nice light there. And now we have, coming off of here, we have this incredibly bright white here. Okay. That we need to kind of pull down and really get it to kind of fade out and then we pick it back up again right there if I touch it I'm going to make a smooch but if I blow on it I might be able to get rid of the crap from the eraser that's pretty good so these are our highlights now and highlights can be pulled in with just an eraser on mine, you can also take your white charcoal, it's a white chalk, and this is where the white chalk can come in, right on top if you want it to, and it can come in for the bright highlights. I'll try it on this side to show you. There's some bright highlights here. See, it behaves differently than erasing. It sits on top, but it sits on top in a different way. And you have to make them negotiate with each other. So that sometimes it can be almost more work to make the white behave with the charcoal than going in and just erasing. So you can start to see how it behaves. But it actually works quite nicely. This is a bright white here. This is a nice bright white here. You can see it. This is a lot of bright white back here. This whole area is a little uh, lighter, and the, you'll find that the, the um, white doesn't bleed as well as the black. It's, it's a harder chalk. Um, there's a nice dark right there, or light right there. How's that working? That's actually doing good. All right, so let's keep going. 
there is some lights right here. There is a nice, beautiful light that comes off the body of it. And I'm going to negotiate it in right there. And then down here, we have a lot of bouncing light. We have a lot of light right here, right here, right here. And they're at the angle, different angles of, of when, when, how it's fracturing through the actual physical vase. And down here, we have some nice lights and darks happening until they fade here. These are very bright. And then in here, we have some fracturing lights. Let's step back and see how we're doing. That's not too bad. Actually, that's pretty good. All right. Now we need, we're going to use our pencil here. We need to clear, clean this corner up right here. I'm not happy with this. It's not clear. It's not clear what I'm doing. So I'm going to go back in and this is where my pencil and I have these erasers that from the dollar store that I like to put on my charcoal pencils because they work as a really good tool for removing charcoal. And you can almost draw with them. And I think that is better. We've just indicated that edge. I'm going to smoosh it a little bit. You need to indicate that. Timekeeper, how much time do I have? I always tell you it's... 12 and a half minutes. Uh, 12 and a half minutes. Okay, so let's see. See what I can do with cleaning up and try to get a little bit of work done on the other two. Okay, there we go. That's quite nice. I like that. That linear drawn element can come in to the rest of the drawing now wherever I need it because I've got it. It can merge, but it can also just be part of the overall drawing. Just where I need it, I'm going to pull it in. I need it here, and I need to merge it down. I need it here, and I need to merge it down. I want to clean up this corner here. There's a fancy thing, and I can show it to you across this drawing. It's called, if you look it up in a drawing textbook, it's a lost found contour edge. The best lost found contour edge artist is caught, of course, Leonardo da Vinci. He um, had beautiful figures where the, where the muscle bulges, the line has disappeared. And a lost found contour edge is simply, I can show it to you by erasing this line out and showing you. A lost found is you find the edge, you push the edge, you let the edge almost disappear or completely disappear. And then you pick it up again, and you pull it down. That is the complicated lost found contour. But there are times when a lost found contour does a lot of good for your drawing. Um, so if you, whenever you see an edge that you're like, oh, it's disappearing and coming back, especially with glass, go for it. And, and then you can impress people by saying, oh, that's a lost found contour edge. All right. Now in here... And you sound smart, or they think you're crazy, one or the other. All right, this is, we're going to try to shade this one fast. Up here, it's catching significant amounts of dark for a little teeny thing, because it's got this, like, weird, because of this cast shadow, it's coming through the background of it, right here, which we're only going to have a little bit of time for that, so we'll put that in. And then it's warping in the vase itself. So now our job on this little guy is to make it look round and at the same time very light. This is where the mid-tones come in. Putting the mid-tone in, getting some charcoal on your hand, getting the mid-tone really works on this kind of it. And again, how do you want it seen? Rounded, rounded, and so follow that kind of shading. And I'm, I want it to look like it's bulging at you. So I'm going to try doing it this way. Up and down and then around at the bottom. Okay. Alright, so that's very good. And I'm going to put a little darker than it actually is right here. Because I think I need it. 
because ultimately I want to remove it um, for you for for the drawing when I'm done. So let's go in now. I'm going to go up to the top and work out um, all the detail as I can in the top. And this, as I thought, might be one of the few drawings that I have to do in three segments. Um, I may have to help if you want. I can do a third one to get the rest of the detail done. Because drawing <coughs> uh, glass is, is a way more complex thing than um, anything we've drawn so far. So that's in there. This is in here. I'm going to grab my pencil that's in my hair because I want this eraser. I want to get in there and I want to erase bright elements on that. I want this line to be very light, very, very simple, soft line that I'm going to play with and not leave flat on that. And I think I'm happy with that. Now, I need this to disappear, but it becomes light and dark again. So that's why I darkened that whole space, because now I'm going to play with what is dark, what is light. I'm going to make that darker, and now I'm going to make this line go in there, disappear, around. I'm going to catch this light here like this, pull this off. There we go. Now, this is light against the body of this right here. So this is going to get shaded a little more, as you can see, so that I can take this and actually pull. I want to kill some of that line. It's too thick. There we are. And I'm going to actually erase into that to make this little vase uh, have a nice shadow, and I've got a light source here. <clears throat> I'm going to cut that light source back in. I need to control my outer edge again because I lost it. I lost control of it. I want to put a little bit of a dark there. I want a little dark here, and now I want a bright white here. And all else fails, I can't get the bright white anymore because I darkened my paper. I'll put my white in. Okay. There we go. Now that's how we're getting this whole thing to shade a little bit. Now remember, we have that background plane coming through here and coming down. So I want to merge that even more into the body of my glass because I'm happy... So far, I'm happy with that upper part. Now I need to continue to suggest that this is glass. So this is where I'm going to take the eraser and literally just pull it. Pull it like this. And see if that's enough to create glass, almost like streaks in the glass. And it is almost there. I like that. Right there. And if you need to, I, I use my clothes a lot. That's actually pretty good. I like that. I don't know if you can see that with my camera. I hope it gives you that much detail. Five I'm minutes. really not sure. How much? Five, Five minutes? Okay. So this is trying to suggest this edge. I'm going to go a little bit in there with dark. Go behind this. Go behind this, and I'm going to shade, and I'm going to go back in and indicate that there's also a light source here, which I like. Okay. All right. And then this is going to come in a little bit lighter here, a little darker on me here, come into this. I'm going to go around this. And I think, I'm hoping I don't have to do all my end videos longer, but I think for this video, 
I really think I don't want to cut you off if this, these videos are helping you, and I won't know until after the semester starts. Um, so I'm going to probably stop this video right about here, take a few minutes break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to, I'm going to shoot one more video and get the detail of this done and not rush so that, so that you have at least a completed drawing and then so I don't say, okay, good enough, and then move on. I want to make sure this helps you out, okay? So I'll be back for third.